everyone. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So the next few weeks, I'm going to be discussing my favorite parts from this book. And I know that this book has created such a sensation because there are some absolutely wonderful ideas here. So if you're interested in hearing about my favorite parts of building thinking classrooms in mathematics, then please keep on watching. First of all, big shout out to Peter for this wonderful book. And you can actually see I've got so many post-it notes in here and it's such a practical and helpful book. So one of my favorite chapters is chapter eight and it's called How We Foster Student Autonomy in a Thinking Classroom. And so in a traditional classroom, I think the teacher tends to be the sage on the stage and uses deliberate delivery or transmission method to pass on knowledge uh, to the students and the students are receivers. Now, in this chapter, and it very much aligns with my own philosophy, we want to give students their own ownership and agency over their learning. So our role as a teacher is not the answering machine. We don't have to have all of the answers or give all of the answers to students if they ask questions or when we're trying to help them understand something important in mathematics. So Peter talks about this idea of knowledge mobility. We really try to give our students power and agency to go and share the knowledge and their understanding of different concepts or even the problem and share amongst themselves rather than us giving the answers. And that aligns with my philosophy of really trying to promote a social constructivist environment where students are discussing in pairs or small groups and then constructing their own understanding of the different concepts that we, we want them to understand. Now, if you haven't read this book, it's so easy to read. You can easily pick it up and just dip in and out. There's 14 different strategies. And at the end of every chapter, I love how there's a little summary of macro moves and um, micro moves. And so at the end of chapter eight, if we're trying to foster student autonomy, the macro move is really trying to utilize that idea of knowledge mobility, that students can actually teach each other or they can pass on the knowledge around the classroom by discussing and sharing. So try to encourage that. And then his micro moves here are model passive interactions by helping groups to see what other groups are doing. So, you know, we can say, oh, look at this group. If a group comes up to you, for example, and asks a question, you could say, well, what are the group next to you are doing? What, what are they doing? And, and I imagine as teachers, we know what the groups are doing because we're walking around, we're listening, ears, eavesdropping into conversations. So we know which groups are at which stages and what's being discussed. And so we want to try and utilize that idea of knowledge mobility. So the other micro move that Peter talks about is modeling active interactions by suggesting groups talk to each other. I think that's wonderful. Uh, he's got don't say or show anything that another group could actually show. You'd be surprised that there's always someone in the room I found that can actually explain things really well and a lot of time better than I could. Uh, I tend to not give answers. I like to scaffold students thinking. If I've walked around and I realize everybody's stuck on a particular point, then I will scaffold student thinking by asking some more questions, posing some more questions to try and guide their thinking and move them on to the next step, but still not telling the answers. So um, next week, I'm going to be sharing another favorite part of this wonderful book. Thank you so much, Peter, for writing this book and really creating a transformation across Ross Mathematics Education globally. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time.